In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate color palettes using a fixed image through techniques like pixel sorting and changing the resolution. This simple idea, the simple algorithm results in all kinds of different color palettes and these visual ideas that not only stand on their own as cool works of art, in my opinion, but as a possible part of a greater visual or audiovisual process. The idea itself did not come from me, it's from the book Generative Design, where it was implemented using JavaScript, and I always find it fun to find ways to implement these kinds of ideas uh, using a different programming language. This lets me appreciate the process, as well as figure out the methods, the ways of working with visual and sometimes musical data for generative purposes. It's a really cool idea, it's implemented in a simple manner. Let's see how it is done. Here I am back on the website for the Generative Design book. This website contains a bunch of P5.js sketches for generative artworks. And today I'm interested in this one right here. This artwork is all about uh, generating color palettes and also uh, sorting pixels in an image, in a fixed image. I think it's more clear if I look at the P5.js code itself. If I run this right here, I can actually see some instructions or controls in the comments. So the X position of my mouse, so the horizontal position changes the resolution, already very cool. And I can press the keys one to four to load in different kinds of images. And then if I press five, I'm not sorting the colors at all. All the pixels are where they're supposed to be. But if I press six, the colors are sorted on here. Look at this, beautiful. It's very abstract, but there's some kind of pattern to it, of course. If I press seven, they're sorted on saturation at the top are more saturated or I guess less saturated pixels and at the bottom are more saturated. If I press eight, instead they are sorted based on brightness. At the top are darker pixels while at the bottom are brighter pixels. And if I press nine, they're sorted based on luminance, uh, grayscale, which is I guess a bit different. Yes, yeah, slightly different than brightness does produce a different result, right? The point is by just ordering the pixels on the image, we can generate all different kinds of images and color palettes on their own. They already look like cool works of art, but we can also use this in visual and audiovisual processes that require a color palette. The question is, how are we going to implement this in Max MSP? Well, let's see. I've already did the work of implementing a window, uh, which is going to be our interface. Uh, and I have created all these objects that essentially result in the X and Y normalized coordinates of my mouse, of my cursor in this window. Uh, I'm not going to elaborate on what I'm doing here exactly. If you want, you can look at the information. I am using a jit.window with the attribute idle mouse one. I'm dividing the pixel coordinates by the size of the window, which gives me the normalized X and Y coordinates. And preemptively, I'm, set, I'm using the send object to send the X coordinate somewhere because later I'm going to use it. Now for this, I have found two cool images off the internet copyright free. I do not think any AI was involved in the creation of these. And if I drag these images into my unlocked max patch, I get this nice fpic object, sending a bang to these objects. And let's start with this one because I like it more because it's more colorful. Uh, sending a bang to this object is going to give us a jitter matrix containing the information about the image, right? So now if I lock the patch, click on this button, this goes into the inlet of jit window. And here we see our beautiful image. So the artwork does two things. It uh, rescales it, it changes the resolution. That's the first thing. And it performs a pixel sorting. It sorts the pixels based on some kind of metric. That is the second thing. And the first thing is easier than the second thing. So I'm going to start with the first thing. To change the resolution of any kind of jitter matrix, we can put it through a jitter matrix that has a smaller resolution. What do I mean by this? Let me declare, let me create another jit.matrix. Let's give it four planes. That's the standard for image files. They usually have the ARGB uh, color space. They are using the ARGB color space, alpha, red, green, blue. So this would have four planes. Let's make the data type float32 float because I'm such a big fan of the float32 data type. And let's give it a resolution of 100 by 100. Now, 
If I take the matrix output of my image of my FPIC object and I put it through this matrix, what is going to happen is that it's going to be squished and it's going to be rescaled in order to fit the specifications of the resolution of my new jitter matrix. So now if I send it a bank, boom, it's much lower resolution. It looks pretty beautiful actually. It looks like cool pixel art when we lower the resolution and by hand, we can lower it even further. Let's make it 20 by 5 by 25. Beautiful, look at this. I, I, I just love color palettes like this. There are all these uh, cool, I don't know, like Instagram pages that take movie stills and generate these kinds of color palettes. It's just really cool. I just really love doing this. Now in the generative artwork in the P5JS sketch, the X position of the mouse corresponded with the change in the dimensions of the resolution of the image. So let's try to change this dynamically. Right, so I'm going to say receive pause X. So the X coordinates I send here are received here. And I'm going to try to use this value to scale a fixed resolution. I'm going to have a message box that says, I don't know, um, 800 by 600 and I'm going to multiply this resolution by whatever this value is here right so it can be all the way up to almost 1.0.999 so it's 800 by 600 more or less and can go very 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 low and then it's like 1 by 2 or something now to multiply a list of values with a single value we have to use the vexper objects vexper right and I'm going to type a little formula here dollar sign f1 times dollar sign f2 actually wait yeah i can do this the order does not matter wait the order does matter yeah the order does matter unfortunately because i'm going to give this the attribute scalar uh let's see wait no uh, looking at the description of the scalar mode it is not important uh, so what i'm doing should be fine at scalar mode one all right, so what I was being confused about there is the fact that I'm sending a list to one of these inlets and I'm sending a scalar, a single value to the other inlets, right? So I have to enable the scalar mode attributes in order to have the behavior I want. Now I can send my fixed resolution to the second inlet, the cold inlet, and I believe if I got this right, anytime I send a value to the first inlet, the single value will be multiplied both by 800 and 600 separately, right? So this is the scaled value that we are getting. Now, these are float numbers, but as you can see, they are pretty much scaled versions of our target resolution. So what we can do is we can prepend this with the message dim, right? Prepend with the argument dim is going to create a message that starts with dim and then it has these two values. And then I can plug this message message into my jitter matrix here. Nothing is happening in the window, even though I'm moving my cursor. Why is that? Because I need to send this bang again, right? So maybe I can do something like uh, TBF. What does this mean? This is the trigger object. And it always goes from right to left. So F, float number goes here. Upon receiving something from the pause X object, and then I'm sending a bang to this little button right here. So now each time I update my exposition, I'm resending this picture, I'm updating this information. And this should do what I want it to do. There we go, perfect, look at this. Now I can move my cursor along the x-axis to get all different kinds of resolutions. I can go very low like this, beautiful, and very high like this as well. Okay, so that was the easy part, right? Now I can change the resolution very easily using uh, the cursor position in my window. But how are we going to do the sorting? Well, to do the sorting, there is an object, the JITS object that features sorting the pixels or cells in a matrix called JITS.bsort. But I do not like this object that much because the algorithm isn't really optimized, so it does run very slow on high resolution images. So instead, I would like to go to file all the way at the top at the uh, options at the top, go to file and go to show package manager and find the X-ray package on the top right. I write X-ray and this is a external package. I have to download this, 
using the Max MSPs package manager, and then I have an access to a bunch of objects uh, that deal with uh, yeah jitter and data and geometry and video, which includes objects for quick sorting. That's what we want to do. So you need to download this package in order to do the things I'm about to do in this video. All right, now, if you have downloaded that package, you should have access to an object called xray.jit.quicksort, which performs a sorting algorithm on a matrix. And to see this very clearly, we can right click this object and go to its help file. And you can see here is the little little basketball guy, the basketball kit. I think it's a kit, or maybe a teenager, I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, look, it goes into the xray.jit.quicksort and now all the pixels are ordered, right? Uh, so all the red pixels, all the colored pixels are here and all the less colored pixels are here. And there are all these messages we can send to the object to change the way that it behaves. For example, dim mode uh, changes if it's ordered horizontally or vertically, plain mode, changes which plane is used, I imagine, for the ordering. The sum mode, uh, I believe, and it's written here actually, uh, if sum mode is one, it is sorted based on the sum of planes, there are recursions, there are iterations, there are split point, there are a lot of things, and I want to copy and apply these in my own patch. Right, so I'm going to copy all of this, I'm going to paste it here, and I'm going to connect the information relevance to what I want to do to my xray.jit.quicksort object, right? And knowing what these do, I don't really need split point. I don't really need recursions, but I would like to use dim mode, plain mode, sum mode, and the iterations messages to this object. In any case, what I want to do is to get the result of my scaled matrix, my uh, the matrix where I have changed the resolution and plug the result of that into xray.jit.quicksort and then plug the result of that here. And by default, as soon as I do that, look at what happens. When I change the resolution, suddenly the image looks much different. All the red colors are to the right, and the other ones are kind of sprinkled all about. That's because, by default, this object is going to sort the red colors, right? You have to choose which plane gets targeted for sorting. And if I say plane mode 2, I believe I'm going to sort the green colors. Now, all the green colors are sorted here. The red and blue ones are a bit scattered or I can change plain mode to three, and now all the blue colors are ordered and all the other red and green colors are kind of floating around the place. If I want to sort everything, I can enable sum mode. And now all the sum of all colors are sorted, so more or less the brightness of the pixel determines uh, if it's shifted to right or to the left. And the iterations uh, determines, let me get it like this, if I have less iterations, then not all of the pixels are sorted. And this is a very cool effect, right? If I have more iterations, more of the pixels are sorted and I can go very high, right? And now all the pixels are sorted. But if I have a low amount of iterations, it becomes more glitchy than sorted. And you can really automate this. I think this was an example in the reference file of this object. Yeah, look, it uses the line object to generate this little ramp, which we can also do. Send the message here and then over 10 seconds go from zero iterations to thousand iterations. And as I do this, you can kind of see how the algorithm changes over time. This is a really cool effect. Right, now this looks pretty close to the P5 sketch, but if you remember, uh, the ordering of elements in our P5.js sketch was not done through the amount of red or amount of green or amount of blue, it was hue, saturation, and brightness, right? And we, to do this in Max and Jitter, we have to make use of two objects called jit.rgb to HSL and jit.hsl to RGB. So this, these objects change these objects change the incoming ma matrix uh, based on yeah which object we are using so if an object with rgb information is coming in it's turned into a jitter matrix containing hsl information instead the hue saturation and lightness in their own planes and if a matrix containing those kind of information is sent to jits.hsl to rgb then it's converted back into a jitter matrix containing red green and blue amounts in its planes now when we visualize things 
Jitter always uses the RGB color space, right? It always uses the ARGB color space. So what I then want to do is to, let me, uh, there we go. I want to take my scaled matrix, you know, the matrix where the resolution is changed, and I want to use JIT.RGB to HSL. And as you can see, it looks very freaky after I do this because I change the color space to HSL. I sort the colors, right? Let me uh, change the iterations to, I think, minus one, which is the max amount of iterations. I'm sorting the pixels, but then JIT.Window interprets that data not as hue, saturation, as and lightness, but as red, green, and blue. So I have to whoop, do this right here. After it's sorted, I need to convert it back to RGB. And now we have the rightfully sorted version. Uh, some mode is still enabled, so I'll turn this off. I'll change plain mode to one hue. And look at this, look at this beautiful image. Look at all the pixels ordered based on their hue. Look at the amazing rainbow that results from it. Right, I can also order this based on the saturation. And now the less saturated colors are to the left and the more saturated colors are to the right. And I can use, sort everything based on their brightness or the, uh, or the value. And now the darker pixels are to the left and the brighter pixels are to the right. I prefer sorting things based on hue. I think this creates for a really cool color palette. And now having done this, I can try the other image as well, right? So all I need to do is I think I can take the image and drag it into the fpic object while the patch is unlocked and that will replace the image with something else so now i have this yeah this nice environment and i can ask it to sort things based on hue and i think it's already doing it it's just that yeah it doesn't really matter because there's not a lot of variance in the hue so i can maybe order things based on saturation and there we go, it's immediately different. I can order things based on brightness. And again, there's not a lot of difference in this specific case, but it does It does look, yeah, depending on your taste, it might look like an AI-generated image or a nice impressionistic painting. A final thing we can do is to change the dim modes to make sure, uh, yeah, it's ordered not from left to right, but from top to bottom. And this, this I love, this results in these beautiful landscapes. Look at this. Let's order things by hue again. There we go. Now, now it's like upside down. I guess the image is already kind of rainbow-like, so there's not a lot of ordering being done. But still, you can play around with this. I will definitely play around with this after I have completed this video. But uh, there you have it. So I think it was simpler than you would have thought to implement this nice P5.js sketch into Max MSP. One thing we don't have is, of course, the, uh, the button inputs, right? So I cannot right now press the keyboard's numbers in order to change all these parameters, but I will leave that as a little exercise to you. You can use the key object. You can explore the key object that reports more or less keyboard presses, presses on your keyboard, and you can find ways to route those and transform that data into information that triggers different plane modes, switches between resolutions, and switches between images. In any case, I find this a really cool algorithm to generate interesting images that can be used on their own or as a part of something greater. I hope you have a lot of fun exploring this, and thank you for watching.